Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The Mets became the first sports team to play in New York since the terrorist attacks. The Mets were trailing 2-1 in the bottom of the eighth when Mike Piazza came to the plate with a chance to put New York ahead. Lopez wants it away. And it's hit deep to left center. Andrew Jones on the run. This one has a chance. Home run! Mike Piazza and the Mets lead 3-2. Here were uniformed firefighters who probably lost friends, God forbid even family. And yet, because Mike Piazza get a home run. They have something to actually smile about. Katrina slams into the golf course. Wind gusts up to 120 miles Projectiles an hour. Projectiles that can kill you. Stucco literally ripped off the side Shred of the part of the roof covering the Superdome, where some 10,000 people had sought shelter. This gas shelter. station, which is basically where we've sought safety, uh, it is slowly being ripped apart before our eyes. The former St. Morton Anderson is here for most field goals. Look out! Right through! could not script this any better than it just happened for New Orleans Saints. Everybody thought that the wave of emotion would come in with the Saints, and for those people who look to the New Orleans Saints as something that will uplift them, uplift this city, uplift the entire Gulf region, they just had it. It's Tracy Porter taking it all the way. Plenty of cities carry their sports teams through a tough season. It's a rare thing when a sports team carries a city through tough times. A tragedy of monumental proportions. That's how the president of Virginia Tech described the horror that unfolded there. The deadliest mass shooting in American history. It's a tragedy, and at this hour without explanation. We know that a gunman opened fire, killing at least 31 people, and that the gunman is also dead. At least 20 others were wounded. We will continue to invent the future through our blood and tears, through all this sadness. We are the Hokies. We will prevail. We will prevail. We will prevail. We are the Jimmy Wow. wow. Uh, I think all of us here feel that we are Virginia Tech today. Here. Listen, I've said it before. I don't know what a Hokie is, but God is one of them. God bless Virginia Tech. <laughs> the effort to sort through the massive disaster areas in northern Japan is just beginning. And take a look at this, an aerial of what around 24 hours ago was a town of 71,000 people now completely underwater. No structure still standing. And Japanese media has just reported that authorities there have found two to three hundred bodies on a beach in Sendai, the city near the epicenter of today's massive 8.9 magnitude quake. But that was just part of what has been a day of historic devastation for this American ally. Here come Japan, corner kick. Can they uh, add even more drama to this match? Can they ever? And guess who's done it? The Mari Sawa, unbelievably, scores for Japan to make it 2-2. Two -two. They have come back yet again. Kumagai for Japan. Hope Sola plays a little game with a, a prayer, I suspect, from Kumagai. And the World Cup for Japan. They have rewritten the history books in Germany. At 2.50 p.m. today, uh, there were uh, simultaneous explosions that occurred along the route of the Boston Marathon near the finish line. This jersey that we wear today, it doesn't say rest up, it say Boston. This is our city. And nobody gonna dictate our freedom. Stay strong. Thank you. Well, 
first of all, I want to say this is for you, Boston. You guys deserve it. We've been through a lot this year, and this is for all of you and all the family who struggle with a bombing early this year. It's for all of you. Three hours of terror overnight, multiple shootouts, hostages, a packed nightclub under siege. By the time it was all over, at least 50 people dead, even more injured tonight. And it is my belief, I know it's your belief as a club, that this sport can lift up a community and help to heal a community. And that's what we did on that Saturday following the Pulse tragedy. They honored the 49 victims of the Pulse nightclub shooting at their home game just six days later. The teams wore special rainbow shirts as a symbol of unity. The crowd sang an emotional rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. And the most moving of all, the game was stopped in the 49th minute to hold a moment of silence for the 49 victims. We're here to commemorate and unveil the 49 rainbow seats that will sit permanently in section 12 of our new stadium as a constant reminder of the senseless acts of June 12th. Get straight to the breaking news. Harvey provoking an unfolding flooding disaster in America's fourth largest city, Houston, Texas. This is all happening right now as we come on the air, and the situation is unfortunately dire. Our worst fears, unfortunately, unfolding in the Houston area of the second punch of our one-two punch with Hurricane Harvey, now slamming southeast Texas with heavy rain and uh, emergencies happening overnight with now over a 1,000 rescues, as you mentioned, in and around the Houston area. Rated over here because of the Sanchez success. Here's a ground ball right side, could do it. The Houston Astros are world champions for the first time in franchise history. Breaking news, you might say heartbreaking news. Police say that a shooter believed to be just 19 years old opened fire at his former high school. At least 17 people are dead making this one of the deadliest mass shootings in American history. The fact that this is the 18th school shooting, and this is only February, is a testament to where this country has come and how far we need to, we need to dig out of this hole. We need to step out of it and take a look back and realize there's something seriously wrong here. Six minutes and about 20 seconds. In a little over six minutes, 17 of our friends were taken from us, 15 were injured, and everyone, absolutely everyone, in the Douglas community was forever altered. Sport became an afterthought until the team sat down for a meeting three days later. We just, the thing is, we talked about that you're kind of representing a little more than just ourselves and the team, it's the whole community. With Stoneman Douglas up three in the championship game, the players couldn't help but reflect on the 17 victims. I do believe they were there. I knew they were there. There was times where I just felt like we have 17 other players on our team right now. We're at a huge advantage. This wasn't for us, this was for the 17 victims. We played for them. So passionate, so emotional, it's all for them. I noticed that there were 17 of us, and there were 17 victims that died. So we went back to the school that day, and each of us put our medals on the memorials. A 22-year-old African-American man named Stefan Clark was uh, shot and killed by Sacramento police in his own backyard late Sunday night. And you'll be find, uh, shocked to find out that he was unarmed when he was shot and killed. Uh, Last night in Sacramento, not only were the Celtics and the Kings players wearing shirts in their pregame warm-ups, remembering Stefan Clark, who was shot to death by police one week ago, but between Thursday night's march and the Celtics' arrival in Sacramento for last night's game, the two franchises teamed for a statement on the emotional issues reignited by Clark's shooting. We will not stick to sports. We will not shut up and dribble. This is bigger than basketball. Change can be uncomfortable. Change is necessary. We need to talk. We need to act. We matter. We must unite. Say his name. Stephon Clark. Stephon Clark. We must unite.